Hi, welcome back to my floss tube channel. My name is Phoebe, and on this channel, we're going to talk about cross stitch. I occasionally talk about one of the other crafts that I really enjoy, which is crochet, but I haven't done any in the last two weeks, so I'm mostly just going to talk about the projects that I stitched on in the last couple weeks. It looks like I'm in a different filming location, that's because I am. I mentioned, I think, in one of my last couple videos that my oldest moved out. I have a sophomore in college and he decided to spend this next couple semesters at his dad's and commute from there to, he goes up to Salt Lake to U of U. So I decided to turn his room into a guest room slash my filming location, which is really nice because where I was filming before was my office, which it was in an unfinished portion of our basement where I manufacture all of my nail polish for my brand Moonshine Manny. And it is a pretty good space, but because it was doubling for filming and for my workspace, like my manufacturing space, it was pretty busy in there. Also, the lighting wasn't great. I'm hoping that it's gonna be okay today. And I have like pretty bare bones space in here because I just like literally decided to do this today. So, um, yeah, this is gonna be the new setup for a little while at least, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully as I finish more projects, there'll be more things to look at on the walls. So I'm also gonna be trying this setup for sharing my whips and we'll see how that goes. Um, I previously was like exclusively showing my projects from the overhead view. Um, primarily because I was using a green screen behind me to kind of be able to cover up the fact that I was filming in front of a big space that wasn't, it really wasn't a good filming location. Um, so we're gonna try this out and hopefully it goes okay. Hopefully you guys can actually see stuff. When I go to edit, if I don't feel like you can see it, I'll probably refilm some footage um, overhead so that you can like get a good look at stuff. So anyway, Welcome to my Floss Tube channel. I film an update about every two weeks to just chat with you about what I've been stitching on. I decided to uh, make this channel after finding Floss Tube a couple years ago and just falling in love with hearing you talk about all of your stitchy projects and I wanted to join in and get to know some of you as well and be able to share what I'm working on. And it's definitely, um, it doesn't make me want to stitch because I want to stitch every day, all day long, but um, it definitely encourages me to maybe get some things done. One of the things I'm doing in 2024 is I'm trying to work down my mania, my 23 projects that I, um, I didn't start them all last year for mania, but I did start some new ones and some were carried over from the year before. So I have two finishes today. Um, are they both from Mania? One of them's not. One's from Mania, one's not. And I don't think I have any new starts today, but I did start a bunch of things for my 12 by 12, which you, I showed you in my last video. So, but I do have a number of whips to share with you. I don't have any haul to talk about today. And then we're gonna talk about plans and I have a little book talk at the very end of the video. So that's kind of kind of be the order of what we're gonna do today. So let's first take a look at finishes. So the first finish that I accomplished in the last couple weeks is this one, it's Friendship Garden. So I really wanna just look at my whips and find the things that I am almost finished with and just get them done. So this one is stitched on, it's either 16 or 18 count vintage Country Mocha Ada. This was like a piece of fabric that the Craft Center of Fine Stitchery had already like ready to go for this project when I picked it up there and I have the um, the buttons in there and the beads and this is such a cute little stitch. This is from Heart and Hand and it's called Friendship Garden and I do have this pattern to give away today. So if you would like to enter to win um, this pattern, I'll send it to you. Now keep in mind that it is a secondhand pattern because I've used it to stitch. Um, but if you would like to just make sure that your comment includes the word friendship and then next week I'll announce who is the winner. I do actually have a um, winner from the giveaway from last week to uh, let you guys know who won that in, in a little bit. So anyway, I am not sure if I want to turn this into a little pillow. This is going to be gifted to a friend 
and I don't know if I want to turn it into a pillow because it's pretty small um, or if I want to frame it or what I want to do but I am excited to have it done I decided to give it away as a gift because um, well I think giving stitchy gifts is really great anyway because you're giving a piece of your heart but also um, since it talks about friends I just thought well this wouldn't really make sense for me to keep in my house so anyway I need to finish this in the next couple weeks like fully finish it and so that is my first F not FFO, my first finish. Okay, so my second finish is Gathering Honey from Luminous Fiber Arts. This one did not get ironed, I apologize for that. This is one of my Mania pieces, and I think this one was a carryover from 2023, I'm pretty sure. I really love the four, I th no, it might be more than four now, yeah, um, patterns in this style from Luminous Fiber Arts. But for some reason, this one took me a really long time to finish stitching. So, I don't really know why. Um, but I think that it's probably because it's two strands over two. Um, this, I think, is a 32 count. And I use two strands of Schneckli from Weeks. The called for is, I think, a Belsois teddy bear, and I didn't have that when I um, kitted this up, so I just decided to use Schneckley, and I love Schneckley. It's such a pretty color. I have two whip journals. Um, I don't use the Book of Days, but I do have these two journals that I keep track of all of my new whips. So this one, and then I have a table of contents in the beginning. Um, this one... I started on May 21st, 2022. So, and I only stitched on it three times after that and, it was, and then it was a finish. But that's light mocha 32 count. So I don't know if that's what, what the base of that is, but that's what my notes said. So I think this is probably another scrap that I picked up at Crafts, either Craft Center or Shepherd's Bush back in the day to go ahead and stitch this. So I really like that I stitch it with Schneckley. I don't have any of the other patterns from Luminous Fiber Arts in this design. I figured I was gonna finish this one and decide if I really, cause ideally I feel like what would look really cute is I finished them all kind of like that one there, like a block finish, a stand up, and then had them all together. I feel like that would be really fun. So anyway, that is my second finish. And I have this one to give away as well. So just like with the previous design, keep in mind that it is like they're a little well worn because I didn't make working copies of either of them. So make friendship in your comments for this one. And let's do, um, let's do honey for this one. You can enter both of them or neither or just one, whatever you want to do and I'll send that to you. So we're gonna go ahead and get into whips. I wanna start with my two strands a day stitching. I decided to uh, make the Happy Hearts pattern by Birds of a Feather um, my two strands a day for the month of January. I was like, is there something on my pattern? I'm not used to showing my, my whips like this or something on my fabric. So here's what I got done in the first how many days of January has it been? First 14 days. So I'm stitching this on a piece of 36 count. Um, here's how it looks. Uh, this is over dyed by me. And I am, wait, is this 36 count? Actually, I think this is 32 count. And I'm doing one strand over two because I really, really like that look. And I really don't like stitching with two strands. <laughs> It just makes me not want to pick up the project. So I'm very, very excited about how much progress I got done in those two weeks, essentially. And I didn't realize, I just like got so excited to get going on this project and I didn't realize how, yes, I only have one nail painted. I didn't realize how there's so many initials to choose like what you wanna stitch in place of what they have in the design. 
So this was already an M, which out, works out good for me because my last name is Moon, but there's a whole bunch of other ones. So I think I'm just gonna do the initials of my family members, my immediate family members, and um, like if there's a second initial, maybe I'll do like their first name and, and uh, middle name. So I'm just so used to showing you guys my projects so much closer than this that this doesn't feel as satisfying to me to hold it like this far back. So I don't know. It's gonna be an adjustment for me. So you're gonna see this come out in the next couple videos because I'm gonna stitch on this every day in January. Oh, and if those colors look strange to you, it's because I completely did my own conversion for this project because I love collecting floss from all the different dyers and I love mixing silk in here and like this one's a dinky dyes. So I just wanna use all the different things and not so much do what's called for. So that's why it looks different. In fact, Onyx is called for and I'm using Classic Colorworks Caterpillar to have the dark places in the pattern actually be a very dark brown instead of a black shade. Here is my next whip. This is Reflet de Soie Louisa Barney. And I randomly drew this a couple weeks ago to um, stitch on and I didn't get to it because I had like New Year's stitching I wanted to do and stuff. So basically the last time I pulled this out, I'd done here and this time I did here. I love this project so much. I'm stitching this with the Swa 103s. There are so many of them and I don't have a good um, storage method for them. My friend Heidi, who I'm, I'm buddy stitching this with, she has a little case for them and I probably should get something like that. Right now I just have them in a big Ziploc bag separated into three different, um, not categories, but numbering situations. So anyway, here's the stitching. It's on 40 count. So it's one strand over two. This is the part that I did this time. And I just love it. This first portion that I did, I was like, oh, I don't know if I love this, the colors that they've chosen for these leaves because it looks like they should be branches instead of leaves. But as I'm pulling in more colors, I'm enjoying it much more. And you know who really inspires me to get this out is Kim. Hi Kim, your your whip of this project is just absolutely stunning and I think she's doing a, a different part than me. I think you're on the bottom part, right Kim? And so anyway, I was like, oh, I, when I saw her video, I um, her update, I was like, oh yeah. I didn't get this out the previous two weeks. I'm definitely gonna get this out now. So this is on a giant blanket that I over dyed. Whoa, I can super back up in this room now. So, um, and I'm stitching it on blue, which I'm really pumped about. I mean, it's not entirely blue. There's a lot of kind of grayish as the base, but then there's a lot of blue. So I'm very, very excited for that. This will take me years and years and years, but it's so enjoyable to stitch on, so that's what I'm all about. I'm all about the joy and stress relief that I get from the craft rather than like, oh, I need to finish this for such and such reason. I mean, occasionally I do for a gift or something, but so there's my Louisa Barney. Okay, on the 10th of the month, I stitched on this. On the 10th of each month, I stitch on my anniversary piece. Uh, my husband and I were married on April 10th of 2010. And um, this is Pretty Little London by Satsuma Street. I finished Pretty Little Hawaii a couple of videos ago, I think. And I started London. And the colors are really cool and super different from the Hawaii one. And I'm really loving them. Um, this is, I think, a 16 count. Ada, I was thinking it was 14 count, but I don't know, it just doesn't look quite big enough. And as you can see, it's gray with gray printed modeling on it already. I think I just got it at like Hobby Lobby or something. So I'm stitching this with two strands, which means I don't love it as much, but um, I wanted it to be the same as Pretty Little Hawaii. So that's 
why I did that. And I think I want to finish them like Satsuma Street has it um, finished in the model, like a cross stitch hoop finish, even though I'm an enhanced stitcher. So didn't get a ton of work on this, you know, but this is how much I got done in a day of stitching on the 10th. And it's using the call for DMCs. Okay. When I hold it like this, I feel like that looks pretty color accurate, but I know that when you go to put it into your editing software, it often changes. So it might be flashing out, but this is a very bright pumpkin-y. There we go. It just color adjusted. <laughs> it's a very bright pumpkin-y fiber on a whim. It's just called pumpkin. Looks like it's just called pumpkin. So I'm gonna pull in so you can see. So this is a piece of 36 count, a wrinkly piece, sorry. This is Sue Hillis Hello Halloween. She has like a whole series with these trucks and I think they're so, so cute. And this was one of my 2023 mania pieces. Editing this video is gonna be cake compared to how I usually do it. If I can feel like you're seeing this okay and I don't have to film the additional overhead footage. So that's why I keep coming in super, super close. Oh, you know whose camera work is so great is um, Katie from So Tattered. When she pulls in to show you her stitching, it's just like, it feels like I'm, she's like right next to me and I'm just looking right at her footage. I love it so much. So that is how I will aspire <laughs> to be um, because she's able to be like farther away from the, the um, the camera and then she pulls in really close and I'm just like, woo, the stitches are right in my face and I love it. I wish that more people would actually do that because I love to just like see up close and see the texture of the piece. Anyway, so I rolled this with you guys randomly in my last video that I was gonna work on this. So I pulled this out on the 13th and I did not get a ton done. Honestly, I guess I just didn't have a ton of stitchy time that day. So I filled this out a little bit more. This whole door with the sign that says Boo Ink has now been filled in. So, not a massive amount. I will be shocked if this one's out of my mania um, by me. But, you know, a little bit of progress is progress. So, and I also really love this piece of fabric. It's, it's just super fantastic if you have any um, if you come across it, it's just really, really fun for a Halloween piece. Okay, next up is my birthday stitch that I stitch on the seventh of every month. And this is Vintage Stitches from Jeanette Douglas. So usually when I show you guys, it's just really up close overhead and you probably can't tell how tiny this is. Look at how tiny this is. It's so funny when I'm showing it like this. I'm like, oh yeah. I feel like I've been working on this for so long and it's so tiny, but the thing of it is, is it's really, really intricate. So I'm stitching this on some 28 count Lugana, which I really enjoy stitching on. This is that piece that I started doing over one Tisket a Tasket for Rosewood Manor because I was like, oh, I can fit it on this piece of fabric. But yeah, that project is so like involved and so many color changes and everything that that is not a good time to try to stitch that over one. So I am using this pattern for this project for this. I'm using this fabric for this project. Woo. Okay. So what did I do this time? I put in these bottom grapes. They are Algerian eyelets or are they Smyrna crosses? I think they're Smyrna's and then the leaves are just um, are just long stitches. I'm gonna see if I pull in if you can actually see that. So that was fun. Then I finished this part and then I came over and I did this. So these are over one little leaves. There's a lot of over one in her projects, I'm learning. This whole thing was over one. And then the reason I love to pick Jeanette Douglas's patterns for um, 
my birthday stitches is I really like doing specialty stitches and so it's really fun for me. These outside parts with, no, this was fun, but these ones with the big lorikeet wool things, I'm not a fan. <laughs> it's also around here. So you guys have seen me be, have been stitching on this since August. I only pull it out one day a month, but it should be done before August, I think. And if for some reason it doesn't seem like it is, I'll pull it out more days besides just the seventh of the month. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else I didn't do yet, or anything else I did in the last week I didn't talk about yet. I think that's, that's pretty much everything I did this time. So, still continuing to love this project. The flosses have changed a lot since she designed this. In my opinion, this looks quite different from the cover image, but I'm still loving it. And who did I see is working on, or maybe they just showed the pattern Vintage Flowers by Jeanette Douglas. Oh, that is gonna be my next one. It was so beautiful, so yay. All right, on the fourth of the month, I stitched on my Salute to Abigail. In this view, you can actually see this big piece of fabric that's really kind of interesting. I mean, you can see the full thing. You know what's frustrating about this? I've never been a dog person, right? But we have two dogs. Since we moved into this house, we're finally no longer renting after 10 years of being uh, married. My husband and I finally bought our first house so we could have dogs. So yeah, you get dogs, but then whenever I get this out, I feel like one of my dogs might have actually like maybe tinkled on this fabric somehow. I don't know how, but whenever I get it out, I'm like, that doesn't smell great. Yeah. Does anybody have any advice for me? Because I don't want to wash this. It doesn't have flosses in it that were dyed by me, but the fabric was dyed by me and I just don't want to like do anything to it. So anyway, as you can see, I have a whole nother half of this that I can use for something cool. I mean, I probably should have used this for like a Mirabilia because it's a great combination of neutrals and gray blue, but you know, I just feel like it, it really makes that light blue really pop. So let me see how I can. Okay, so here is how Salute to Abigail is going. This is from the Sweet, Sweet Land of Liberty book. Anyway, um, Blackbird Designs. Look, I only have a little bit left. So I'm stitching on this every fourth of the month and you can see what I have left to do. So this last time that I got this out, I finished up this main big urn and plant with the exception of this little guy has a tiny bit left and the urn at the, at the very bottom. I'm gonna see if I can share that with you up close. So that's where I was working this time. I just, like, as I get close to the end of a project, I start trying to scan across and being like, am I missing anything from here? Am I missing anything from here? So that's what I was doing. And every month I get this out, I'm like, oh, this could be the month that if I just stitch on this for two or three days instead of just one, I could just finish this up. But then I think to myself, but then the project will be over and you will be sad when you don't have it to get out. So you should just savor it, that's what I think. So anyway, I'm not stitching this with the called for flosses. Um, if you would like to know what they are, you can leave me a comment and I will tell you. But I just pulled from Stash. So this is getting so close to being a finish. Let me look at my notebook and I can tell you what I stitched it on. I usually do all of this part not on camera because I don't film this way usually. So this was my 51st start of ever, not this year. Um, so it's number 51 in my table of contents. Wow. It was like the second page and instead I was flipping all the way from the back. So here's all the, here's how I take my notes. So I just start the project, I say who it's by, what I'm stitching it on and what kind of flosses I'm using. So I started on January 4th, 2023. 
and 40 count hand dye by me, threads from Stash, and then I mark down every time I stitched on it, so I need to mark down January 4th at the bottom. And then I have a page like this for every one of my whips, and I need to update my table of contents, like, a lot, because this is my second whip journal, and the table of contents just goes through here. So I need to add a whole, actually what I need to do is take that off and add a whole new one alphabetized. This is my first journal and once it was filled up I moved on to that second one but see all the projects and then I, I kind of know in my head like how early on I started it and so I can remember if I need to choose this journal or the other one. But here's all these whips. So, yeah. Okay, my last whip to share with you from this last two weeks is Half the Fun from Ink Circles. So this is also one of my mania pieces. And let me just tell you what this fabric is called because I love it. It is shale, 18 count shale from Picture This Plus. Um, so it's on an Ada. This is one of my earliest uh, whips and so I was still starting things on Ada and although I really really love picture this plus how it feels if I'm gonna do an Ada project um, I don't love stitching two over one so I could have I could have just done one strand but when I started this back in the day that did not occur to me so I am just burning through Gloriana Charcoal, which is the call for floss, and I have used up a whole skein for half of the design. So I have another skein. I don't know, maybe I'll get it done <laughs> with just the one other skein. I really love charcoal. The variegation is super, super pretty. So for some reason, this project has also been taking me a really long time. Can you guys see the prettiness of shale? It's a barely mauvey purple beige gray. Mauve purple beige gray hybrid. So anyway, really love that one. But um, so I have, let's see, I have one quarter almost completely finished <laughs> there. There might be like whatever's missing here I think would make it complete. So I've, so like nearly two quarters, so getting close to half. I think this time I finished up this and then I came over and I did like a lot of this. And this was the second project that I drew randomly from my um, whips to stitch to stitch on last week, last video. I always choose a project from my mania and then I choose one from all of my whips and it just so happened this time I chose two projects from here. So here's all my mania for 2023 as we're closing in on mania 2024. Everything that has a dot has been finished. I'm hoping to get like two or three more dots. We'll see. So if I can get half the fun done and then, um, oh, here's Friendship Garden. I didn't realize that one was a mania piece. I think I said earlier it wasn't, but it is. So yeah, I can cross that off too. And I don't know. I mean, I'll definitely get the Dutch Steps of Life done by mania. Um, so we'll see. Here's Gathering Honey. So I get to cross that off too. So yay! Anyway, um, what was I saying? This one was from my whip wheel that I draw from all of my projects, I think, or the other one was, I don't know. Either one. Doesn't matter. So anyway, I think it's really cute and I'm enjoying it. I'm feeling very happy that I picked a half or a mini ink circles as my first one rather than a giant one. So that is my final whip. And if I didn't say earlier, whip stands for work in progress. So um, after whips, usually I share any haul. I did get my Be Stitch Me Silk for the month. I think that was pretty much it as far as haul. So next I'm gonna talk about plans. What will probably end up happening is I will be working on these bad boys. I'm trying to get some of these done. So, some more of them done. I'm pretty excited that I got two knocked off from here in the last couple weeks, so that is great. So those are my plans. 
<laughs> my plans. These are my plans. So um, that's what I'll be doing. And then I do have a randomizer that's going to help me pick two random whips to stitch on. So one of them comes from this one here that has 23 projects on it because it was 2023. So number 15 haha <laughs> number 15 is hello halloween so i get to stitch on that one again maybe i'll just stitch on it today since i already have it out and i have all the all the thread out and everything and then i use my tiny decisions app i have all of my whips loaded in here not just mania and then i can tap and it'll pick me another whip let's see what i get oh fun i always love working on halloween quaker so this is supposed supposed to not um, repeat ever. So I feel like I've gotten Halloween Quaker a lot. And that means that I must have been getting it on my um, Mania Whips. So that's okay. I love working on Halloween Quaker. So I put those two up here. In fact, you I'm sure you all noticed by now, but I really like just putting the projects up on the screen so you have easy reference and it's less things for me to remember to bring in to share. So... Okay, that's going to be it for the stitching. If you would like to hear me chat about what books I've been reading, then that's what's going to be next. So if you're not interested, then I will see you back for the next video. So one of my favorite finds as far as reading, which I listen on Audible because then I can stitch at the same time or work at the same time. And so I can go to my profile and then I can go down here to listening history. And so... I think the last video I was talking to you about how I was reading, I read The Second Life of Muriel West by Amanda Skinnendor and I loved it. And my friend found that for me as a free read on Audible since I'm a member, like I get a credit each month. And as long as you're already paying for that, I believe is the stipulation, you can listen to books for free. So this author, Amanda Skinnendor, she writes books, they're historical fiction, and they're usually involving like a minority group of some sort. And so like the first one I told you guys about, The Second Life of Muriel West, it was about a woman that ends up being sent to a leper colony. And then, and I loved it, the next one I read by her is called The Undertaker's Assistant. And it's a, it's another like 18, is it like 1880s? The first one I read was in 1920s. This one I think is like 1880s or so. And it is a black woman in Louisiana and she was a slave, but then she went and she lived with a family in Indiana, but then she wanted to find where she came from. So she came back to Louisiana. She works as an undertaker's assistant, which was like, my friend was telling me, she's like, this was like brand new at the time. So that's already really cool in itself. But, um, just of course the different things that you can imagine that she's going through at that time, which I think they said wasn't too long. I may have the date wrong about when it takes place, but the action of the book is mostly taking about 15 years after the Civil War. So lots of tension and all of her books are kind of like a mystery and the mystery unfolds. And so in that book, the main character can't really remember her past. And so she's just getting like a little bit back at a time. Really interesting. And then the next one that I read is called Between Earth and Sky. And this one is kind of a jumping back and forth in time between this woman. Her parents started a boarding house for Native American children in Wisconsin in about like 1890. And it jumps between that time and um, about 1915. And one of her classmates is on trial for murder. And so you're getting back and forth between like her interaction with these children who were trying to be forced to be what they weren't and having all of their culture taken away from them. And then just like what progress or what progress there wasn't in the period of time to when she's an adult and just how she's trying to help, or maybe she's not being helpful, things like that, and there's mystery, and it's really good, and heartbreaking. All of her books are heartbreaking, so be prepared to cry, um, but really good. 
So she's coming out with a new one in 2024, and I believe it's called The Medicine Woman, and it's supposed to take place in, I think, Galveston, Texas, and her son has a disability, which is very appealing to me. I feel like that one's gonna be really hard for me to read, but they're all a little hard to read, but also just like, like devastatingly, richly beautiful. So I really like them and recommend them. So um, that's what I've been reading. Anyway, all right, that's all of my book chat. Um, I think that's pretty much gonna be it for today. So this was super duper easy to do it this way. So we'll have to see. I won't know if I like it or not till I finish editing and see how I like it. Um, but we'll see what I end up doing in two weeks as far as um, if I continue with the format that I was doing today. So thank you for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed and um, enjoy the giveaways if you would like to. Oh, I'm going to pick a winner for the last video. The winner for the P and Q alphabet from Jan Hicks Creates. That was in my previous video I had for you. This is an unused pattern because I accidentally purchased two. Um, the winner, and I will send you that pattern, is Susan M9824. Thank you for entering the giveaway, Susan. So please email me at moonshine nanny contact. You know what to do. And let me know that I have, uh, just reaffirm that I have your correct address, please, so I can send that to you. Um, okay, that's going to be it. So thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. And I will see you back next time. Bye.